This video will cover Z profiling. Uh, Z profile is a geometry element that we can machine in the Z axis on a milling machine. Normally we use the term profile to denote anything that can be machined in the Z axis and this is why we use it for turning. Normally for milling we use contours which are in the XY plane. So I'm in the CAD system now so if I set up a simple grid and then I'll just draw some lines onto that grid. And so on. We'll put a couple of fillets in here just to show you how we do that. Okay, so first thing is the datum position. It's in the center of the drawing and that's the start point of the uh, profile but we can set the datum anywhere we want it to be and also in the machining we can set where the machining will actually take place so the datum point here is not uh, too important because we can change it at another time so we choose from the CNC menu the profile command and give it the first line uh, because this profile isn't closed I need to give it an endpoint which is there and that creates the profile so we can now take that through into machining, save that away. <clears throat> and then go into machining. So the first dialog box is the machine setup. Check on the tool change position to make sure that's OK. Then we can define the tool we want. So in this case we'll use a ball nose tool. And then set the spindle speed and the feed rate. Then we choose Z profile, and by leaving all the options pretty much as they are, we can see that that's machined that as a profile in the Z axis. Now we can change the tolerance values here, and we can change the direction. So if we go back into that dialog box under slot. The vector tolerance here determines how coarse or fine the vectoring is of arcs. This switch here switches the direction round. So that offsets for a uh, button tool, a square ended tool and also a ball nose tool. So that's a simple slot. If we want to we can turn that into a ruled surface by clicking create a ruled surface giving it the distance between the slots and then the total number of slots and if we want to we can machine each slot in a different direction so that's machined that as a ruled surface and so on Okay, so the angle at where this all takes place, if we want it to be along the x-axis, we leave this value here at zero. If we want it to be along the y-axis, we change that to 90 degrees. So it's now happening in the y-axis, not the x-axis. And that can be any angle we like, could be at 45 degrees for instance. Okay, so we'll set that back to zero. A, resolve, a revolved surface is sort of like a coke bottle shape where it machines either axially or linearly. Under more options we can set up a cut depth. So if we set that, Okay, so I'll just switch off the raw surface for a moment so we can see what's happening with that. Okay, so if we look at the front view of that, so setting up a cut depth will machine that at a single depth. at each pass so that it, in effect it does an area clearance operation on there and by leaving a finishing allowance on there we could use a different tool for roughing and for finishing. Okay, I'll 
stop that and again if we wanted to we can create that as a ruled surface okay so the second thing we'll have a look at is a surface patch so if we close down the cam system I won't save that away so I go back to the CAD and if I wanted to now I could draw another shape which represented a, another profile so we create a profile of that okay so now we've got two profiles so if we save that away and we take that into machining define our tool again we'll use a ball nose tool M6 to do a tool change and then we do Z profile so this is the name of the primary slot here the profile and then under surface I can use a surface patch by associating another uh, profile with that I'll go back to here and just change my tolerance Okay, so if I look at that in the ISO view and switch on the tool center line, so it's machining one profile and associating another profile with it. Now, by setting the height of where all these things take place, I can move this around. So I would need to check on my feed change plane and my initial depth and work surface to move this in the Z axis. Okay, so that's how that works. <clears throat>